this past Saturday, Molly of White Owl Crochet Co. came out with a tester call for the cutest tank. But I didn't apply till Wednesday. She shared that she still needed a bunch of people to still apply. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I did, thinking my size is going to probably be already taken up. I just got an email. Today is Friday. And I am accepted as long as I want to do it. So I'm thinking I'm going to make a size three and it, and I looked and I think it uses like 600 and like 25 yards or 600 and something yards. So let's look at my stash. I would love to have a tank top in Mace of Skeins. Um, this is colorway wild card um you can see it there and I feel like this has less yardage and I don't know if it's because single ply but a little fuzz on it but um at least I feel like I wouldn't be wasting too much being that I'm gonna be using well it's estimated at 625 yards so I'm gonna guess that it's actually less than that that's used if she's using a buffer so I feel most comfortable being able to use that so I'm not going to have that much, as much as I would. I love this yarn. Thank you, Macy of Mace of Skeins, and thank you, Vlogmas, for helping me decide. Um, this is going to be fun. I am not a fan of gauge swatching in the round, um, but just look at the spot of, like, greenish in there. Um, thank goodness I did it on the first try. Yay! I have the... 24 stitches and 32 rounds, I believe is what is called for. Um, yeah, spot on. I am similar gauge to Molly, so that's really exciting. I'm excited to get started. It is an ugly day around here, but I think we have decent lighting. Um, chopped all my hair off <laughs> in case you're wondering the transition, but, um, obviously on my vlogs, a lot of time always usually passes in between. I really don't know where to start. Um, I'm where I'm juggling other projects in the meantime with this, but, um, I've never tested for Molly. I've met her before. I don't know if I've ever said that, if I said that before. Um, and so like I couldn't pass up this design she had posted or she I had seen her newsletter and I didn't apply but then she had posted that she still needed testers and I was like I guess this is the time the time is finally right for me to test for Molly and I applied and so I'm super stoked that I'm gonna get this and I get to use the, the Mesa skeins that y'all had helped me choose during um vlogmas which oh my god i just love single ply so much so um i swatched you know and like that was a hefty swatch there's a lot of stitches involved when going in the round um there are different strategies that you, you can use but i went ahead and did that one and so i ended up frogging the swatch and casting on while talking with a bunch of my friends that we became friends during the pandemic. And it's been a long time since we got to Zoom chat. I didn't document any of that, but um, I did end up putting stitch markers like every hundred stitches or something like that. Um, I probably should have done more frequently because I did have to count multiple times, uh, even still, because I'm socializing. 
So when you cast on so many stitches, definitely using stitch markers is definitely gonna help. And then not to mention on the repeats of this, but this is essentially all the stitches that were my swatch worked up now with it within the pattern. And I just love like, I just love it. This yarn too, I'm loving it. I feel like things are gonna be pretty even and it shouldn't be too obvious with like the skein changes because I just made one big cake and um, yeah, I mean, Molly is a brilliant human. So it's no surprise that her designs and like her uh, process to it all is, um, I mean, it's definitely adequate, like tons of time with her tests usually. And I just love her style of newsletters and pattern writing and um, she's just a cool chick. And I'm really excited that I'm finally getting to make one of her designs and I'm using Mace of Skeins yarn. I'm, I'm super excited about that too. I guess that's my update for now. this project up a couple times obviously you can tell by my progress but I haven't given any updates really boo sorry um I feel like I've been all consumed because there's so much texture so much different stitching and um yeah there's instruction for yeah every row I mean I get it that's what a pattern is but um I don't know. This is a different, it has like a lateral braid thing in it. And this is a different technique than the one that I've used before. Um, so we've been working through the wording of it and um, yeah, just the technique of it all. It is a little bit tricky for me to do as a continental knitter because you do drop a stitch and then stick another needle back into it, maybe on the next braid. I will try to show a little bit of that, of what I do. Um, because I've learned that the stitch I drop, I actually need to physically hold and draw back. It's hard to show in a video though. I could care less about doing anything else in my life right now. I just want to knit on this thing to completion. Um, so I basically lied to y'all because I'm not coming back to show y'all the lateral braid because now, you know, that I've made it through so much texture and looking ahead, there isn't actually another moment that it's used. This is the only time. And um, Molly may, like, intentionally chose to put this stitching in there and give this almost elongated stitch look even though that's not what it is um and I love that even more I tried a different strategy as far as like joining in the round than what she had done we discussed it and I really don't know what's going to end up being the result of the final product I think she's going to be looking into it more because um there are, yeah, other testers tried some things too. So I think no matter what, it's always going to be difficult to be fully seamless. And, you know, we should appreciate those things anyways. Like there are seams in even machine made products and there's nothing wrong with seams. So yeah, I'm not going to be too upset about this. I think that in blocking this might mm, iron a little bit out, but also it's just like one spot. I tried what she had in the pattern currently, um, and I was getting like a bit of a gap. And because you, the way that she does it, you lose the stitch, but it is supposed to keep all these loops together. 
I ripped the nail polish off all my nails today, so I apologize for the ugliness, but it is what it is. I want to sit here and talk to you about it, so just look at the pretty yarn instead. Anyway, so in doing that too with the lateral braid stuff, she ha so you lose the stitch there, and then you need to do a make one on the following to get the stitch back and keep your counts back. Um, but it's kind of hard to find that leg to pull up for the make one because of the way the lateral braid stuff ends up. Um, so some people were just finding something to pull up and making it work. I was concerned that I was going to mess with the tension of the braid somewhere or something. I don't know. I guess either way, it doesn't really matter because you can tell there's something going on there. And so I initially was trying like knit front back, but I still was getting like a gap there. So I decided to avoid like the knit front back and, and being able to see that even though it, fo it is also followed by like pearl bumps here. It did kind of hide within that. Um, but just to avoid all of that, I decided to go back and I just took the last stitch and pulled it through the first lateral braid. Um, and so it just kind of closed and I didn't have to worry about adding any more stitches either. It's fine. It'll do. But, um, yeah, what else? Oh, my gosh. This little row counter thing has been lifesaver. I know I already mentioned that before. And there are different strategies that people use of logging their rows. Um, but I do think that it's helpful to keep track of, especially because, like, I'm using such a colorful yarn. Um, and then all the textures of this design make it kind of difficult to be able to read my work. But that is also what keeps me so like into not wanting, like into this design and not wanting to set it down and loving every second of it. I, I mean, you are constantly at the, having the feeling of just one more row with this project. Mm. I, it might be one of the quicker fingering weight projects that I'm going to have done. I am both a wee bit sad and a wee bit excited because I think I have almost reached the end of the texture fun. I have like five more rounds and then it's stockinette and the front bust and you know, all the finalizings of actually having a tank. I've just got to rave some more about Molly. Testing for her is such a stress-free experience. She is a great listener and problem solver available for just that. Not to mention, she doesn't really set a deadline. It's just whenever the design is ready. I feel like that really allows the pattern to be the best that it can be. So big cheers to Molly. And I totally suggest you to go follow her, subscribe to her newsletter, and take the opportunity to test one of her designs. Since I had plans to travel to New Orleans for Yarny Gras, I opted to wait to do a photo shoot with my friend Stacy. Thank you, Stacy of Ba Humble. She took me to a location that she actually often takes pictures of her finished objects at. I think it's called Breakwater Park based off the locations of my pictures in like New Orleans, Metairie, West End area. 
I'm sure she could totally tell you if you go visit her. Ugh, I will never get over these details. It was still a little chilly when I went to take photos, so I did opt to wear this as a layering piece, which I have never done before, and it was a nice surprise. But I could totally imagine this on its own, paired with some jean shorts. Mm. It also has me thinking, like, I could use a solid tonal version to really let the design shine. I just don't think you can go wrong. Go make one now.